And now, for those of you that are still watching, it's because we're not on YouTube anymore. We can be sure that this stream will not be taken down. Uh, <laughs> and here's where we're segueing to big tech. We were like, we were not planning on doing an entire hour talking about Apple, but it's yeah, we, we it was it's a, it's it is a fascinating study of how much convenience is brought when a company does control uh, the economies right. of scale and their product. Because technically, they build the software and the hardware around it, whereas right. others build the hardware and try to put a software on it. And right. it's, it, it doesn't always work that way. Um, but that's because they've been able to take care of all they've been able to take care of. And right. there's that dark side to these uh, big tech companies because Apple is not without fault in all this. When, it, sure. at the, when I decided to upgrade to the iPhone 12, it's because I made a decision because BlackBerry was basically dead. Um, I made an announcement like rest in peace, BlackBerry last year. And then towards the end of the year, there was an announcement that they, there was a licensing agreement between um, uh, a BlackBerry Limited and this new upstart company called Onward Mobility and a third uh, company called Hi-Fi, Fi-Hi, whatever the heck it's called, uh, to be able to produce, manufacture a flagship BlackBerry for 2021. So then I covered it. I was like, so there is hope. But then when I saw nothing get off the ground in the next several months leading to 2021, it's the most important device that we need right now. Privacy, mm -hmm. that's what BlackBerry is. But nothing was happening. That's when I knew. It's not going to happen. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to bite the bullet. I will upgrade to an iPhone. Because at the time, I had ditched the Apple. I ditched the iPhone. And I was using my Galaxy Note 10 uh, as my 10. primary device. And my secondary device was the folding Surface Duo. So those were the two mm -hmm. I was carrying. But I'm like, I, I, I feel like I need the iPhone again for as a communicator and privacy. So I'm not all in on Android. Right, and then Apple stabs everybody in the back with uh, <laughs> all these privacy infringements and things like, why? Yeah. What scanning what scanning your your iMessages in the um, with the excuse that is to protect uh, children's as well as other things, and there's a fine line on those things. I think the intention might be good, but at the end of the day, we're humans. And if there's one thing that big tech has done very, very well to get us to where we are today is into presenting us with these apples or wonderful, um, you know, ideas and, and features in making us believe that is for, for our own benefits, that it's just, it's, it's in the long run, it's just going to help us you know, it's going to make things more convenient um, and just make thing, everything better. And unfortunately, that's not the case. And Apple have always been very, very tight when it comes to privacy. It is one of the many reasons, obviously, they have been able to keep such a huge market, um, not only shareholders, but also, uh, you know, users, among other things. And seeing what just transpired this year with that particular feature, among other things, was quite scary. It was one of the reasons why I just end up uh, using iMessages for very minute things on a daily basis. And then I just completely moved pretty much my entire family and a few close friends into Signal. And mm. sometimes I use Telegram for, you know... Uh, um, a few news groups that I'm a part of mm -hmm. because at least they, they stayed in, in their, you know, policy agreement that they don't sell your data and they don't do any of these crazy things and that everything is encrypted. And so Apple used to do that. I know that if they would get a request from the U S government to gain access to someone iPhones, uh, messages, as well as other communication features, they'll have to get a, not a subpoena, but they have to get a government uh, case 
assigned to to that in order to gain access so much so that the other day my sister in love that is in california her grandmother my wife's grandmother passed away this year and she had a few ipads and uh, my youngest daughter ella she's she's about to turn four years old uh, she's been dying to not get a device for herself but to play this game called Aptive Game, not sponsor. I'm, I'm <laughs> not suggesting it or anything. It's just that at least it keeps my kids active, moving, as opposed to just looking at a screen, you know, inactive. Anyways, so she wanted to donate one of those I iPads. And <laughs> my sister in love, she used she used a an email address from a domain name called mailed.com. Hmm. Again, not sponsor. I'm not recommending it. But it looks like if you're inactive for I don't know how many years or what have you, they just delete everything. So you oh, don't have right. access to that email account. And that email account was the Apple ID. And oh, so boy. we have we have been trying to get this iPad disassociated with that Apple ID, wiped it out, and then put it under mine. So then I can assign it to my kid with all the restrictions and everything that I put on these devices. I filter my entire network through my wireless system. They don't have access practically to anything. And their time of day is actually um, monitored as well. And they don't have more than 30 minutes or so. Uh, but anyway, we end up calling Apple and having Apple support. And... When she asked them, can I just have you wiped it from your end because we don't have access to this email, we don't have access at all, they were like, well, for that I'm going to need a um, police report or I forgot the, the, the turn itself that she used, but it is something that you need to ask the government to provide in order to Apple gain That's access to it. And it was just crazy uh, that that was the case. But at the same time, I was okay with it because anybody can call and say, yeah, this is my iPad and, and what have you and provide, even though we provided information that it was hers, she actually has the receipt of when she purchased it. Mm. Um, and at the end of the whole conversation, she just, the tech person just told us, um, you just need to wait for up to 30 days and see if we'll be able to come up with something to resolve, you know, your, your inconvenience right now. And I will say, wow, this is, this is crazy. And, and you know, how they perceive these things like that, but that's just Apple. Obviously we know Google as well as every other social media platform out there, including Facebook, which is <laughs> the, the social media platform, well, let me rephrase that, not Facebook, it's Meta nowadays. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's the parent company, apparently. Um, it's, it's the social media platform that I dislike the most, and that's to be yeah. polite. Uh, mm. I have you know worse things to say about it, but um, I do not like it. I signed up with Facebook, I remember back my goodness, 14, I don't know, 12 years or what have you when it started it in the premise of Facebook, like every other big tech uh, services that they provide is always number one, that is free. Number two, that is convenient to you. We're going to be connecting you with your best friend, with your families, with your classmates, and you're going to have a place where you could exchange ideas and, you know, what have you, you can make groups and all those things. And then it turns into this data hoarding company just as worse, as worst, if not more than Google. Oh, it is worse than Google. Yeah. And, and when you hear people <clears throat> just say, well, but I just, you know, that's where I got everybody. That's, you know, I have everything there and things like that. And it's just sad because we're, we're giving up our, our freedom, it, it truly is, to, to just get that 
that dopamine level of acceptance from our friends and other people on social media. And I get it. We're humans. We're, we're looking for attention. That's why we, we do video. That's why we do, you know, podcasts, because we want other people to notice us. However, I think that there's better way to approach those things um, as opposed to selling our souls. And that's what yeah. Facebook is doing with all these AIs and algorithm. They're literally have a individual profile from each of us from day one that we started uh, providing data that they have been aggregating throughout all these years about us so much so that they can literally predict our movement. They can predict whether or not you're going to like a new company that came along that you have no clue whatsoever, a product that you, you were literally just looking at 10 seconds ago on your browser and all of a sudden you go to Facebook and, and just to hypothetically speaking, give an example, here's this underwear company showing up on your feed on Facebook and you're like, wait a minute, I was just looking at that 10 seconds ago. How in the world is this showing up on my feed? I did not search for this. And, and you know, that's how strong these algorithms are, these AI that they have running all these big tech companies. And unfortunately, there isn't enough attention to that. I know Congress um, like to do all these uh, meetings and, and events and bring CEOs uh, to Congress and talk to them and questioning them, is this good or not, and what have you. And at the end of the day, you know, they're all lobbyists. They're lobbying, you know, all these different politicians. And they don't, we just don't get to anything. And as much as we talked about it, the overwhelming majority of people are so connected into this metaverse um, lifestyle that we have that we, we cannot see ourselves living without it nowadays. And on my most recent podcast that I haven't paused yet, I talked about that maybe the reasons behind you need to continue to use those services Perhaps you relied on that, your business relied on that, or you work for a company and you're managing the social media platform. I get those things, but I guarantee you that 95% of the billions of people that use all these companies, specifically Facebook, they just do it, you know, because they have this quote unquote connection with their relatives, their friends, and so on. That is, it comes without hesitation for you to pick up the phone and immediately just, you know, launch that app. And one of the things that I just wanted to prove myself this year was the ability to take a break from all this craziness, especially with all the political debates and disagreement that we're facing on a regular basis with all the censorship for, you know, one side of the spectrum over the other. And yeah. so you literally have to, if you want to have a healthier uh, approach to life and you want to give your brain the, the necessary nutrients offline, off social media, you need to unplug once in a while. You need to take a break. I don't care how long you, you, you know, you make it happen. Um, I know that when Apple introduced uh, the feature screen time for us to monitor how much time we were spending on, you know, all these different platforms for our own health. Um, I they guarantee say. you the, the overwhelming majority of people probably didn't even look at that or maybe they use it and it's like, okay, well, all right. I, you know, I, I used to spend close to five hours a day in so, on social media and mm -hmm. Mostly in uh, on IG and Twitter, which are the ones that I use the most, and so it was a uh, for me. It was important for me to visualize that because it helps you see, you know, consciously how much time you're giving these companies, uh, quote unquote, that are providing all these free services. When in the end, we are we are the ones creating all these metaverse aggregate data that eventually they make billions out of them. 
and out of us, obviously, by selling our data. So we are the product. Exactly. We are the product. Well, it's, I guess I should ask you uh, how, because we talked about this um, um, in the pre interview. You took time off from social media for right. 30 days. Right. And you said you'd done it before for about a week, and that was uh, attainable, right. but the 30 days was not it. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. It literally was. And it felt, to me, social media is like an addiction, right? Like, you know, a drug or something like that. I've never done drugs, so I don't know how the withdrawals are or, you know, what have you. Mm -hmm. um, but the initial five days when I decided to do this 30 day social media detox, <laughs> the first five days, um, I would subconsciously reach out to my phone at any specific time of the day. And I don't know why. I just don't know why. It often happens when you know I have to go to the bathroom or things like that, <laughs> which is perhaps where you're more relaxed, I guess. Yes. And I will find myself trying to figure it out subconsciously, my mind telling me, oh, during this time you were you know, engaging someone on Twitter or, you know, checking IG or posting a picture or, you know, some of those things. And what I decided to do was, I don't know if you have ever heard of uh, the time management called Pomodoro. And no. what it entails is kind of having in a specific a uh, timestamp of your habits or your 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 how you manage your time during let's say um, an eight hour schedule of your day, and I use this app called Be Focused app, not mm -hmm. sponsored. Mm -hmm. uh, I just kind of you know liked it and and kept it, but what I enjoyed doing was that I was able to create multiple profiles during the day, depending on the task that I would do on a daily basis and have this app then run in the background on my Mac. And when I needed to do something, I will click on go. I will specify the time I wanted to spend on that particular task or habit. And, you know, when the time would end, it will notify me and then it will give me a five minutes break in between if I wanted to continue it or not. And I felt that it was very neat. The time that I would spend on social media, I replaced that with reading books. I'm not a big reader. Um, unfortunately, my kids, thank goodness, are really good at that. And mm -hmm. so I, I personally decided that I was going to read more. Um, no. I'm more of a uh, digital reader than, you know, physical book readers. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to purchase a few books that were recommended. And one of those books that I enjoy thoroughly was the Atomic Habits. And I recommend that books to anyone's, uh, anyone that wants to improve their daily habits and tasks and exercise I mean, it's, it's great. It makes you think differently uh, about your time that you spent on um, any sort of habits and tasks, and it gives you a very clear example. And <laughs> let me tell you, when I started reading it, again, I was struggling at the beginning with it because I, I, I've gotten so used to being distracted, especially when I'm in from either my iPad or the computer or my phone. And it was phenomenal with the combination of having an app that can kind of tap you in the back and tell you, hey, this is the time for you to do this. I got to enjoy it. So I finished reading that book within two weeks. And then I jump into another book that I just started reading from Seth, Seth Godin, I think it is. Um, it is Zero to One. And it is, no, I'm sorry, by Peter Thiel, Peter Thiel. And I just started that book during that process that I was doing these social media detox. 
And man, I'm telling you, you begin to develop this focus um, when you have that ability and your brain will thank you later. The other thing that I encourage people as well is to balance your life, balance your social media life and your offline life. Go out for at least 10 minutes. Go for a walk. You don't have to go running. I love running. Uh, unfortunately, you know, after that injury I have this year and then my surgery two months ago, I have not been able to run for the past three and a half months or so. Mm -hmm. And I hated it because running is one of my favorite things to do. But if you're able to disconnect from social media and take a break, go for a 20 minutes walk, uh, go for go to the gym if that's what you enjoy and just make it a habit that provides rewards make it that you you literally write down that you say after i work out i'm going to get you know x and so once you create a habit like that where there's a something that maybe you're not accustomed to do regularly, which is working out, but then there is a reward after that, it kind of en encouraged you to do it more often. If you don't have that, you know, strong will to do things like that, then I will suggest to do, to do it because I, I think it's so beneficial. And through all those 30 days, I just spend more time with my kids. Like I said, I have four kids. Uh, they are in a hybrid uh, schooling system where they just go three three days a week to this experimental school here in Taiwan where mm. everything is in Chinese. And then when they come home in the afternoon, then they obviously do their homework. But we also have a lot of extracurricular schools um, uh, support, whether it's reading groups. Uh, we have coding lessons for our oldest uh, kids. We nice. have extra curriculum activities such as gymnastic, um, uh, not Kung Fu, but uh, Taekwondo. We have uh, sports for my little boy. I have three girls and a boy. So it, it's imperative that my boy gets a little of, a, you know, boy time for him to do his thing. And they have dance class. So, you know, we try to keep it in a way that they are busy and engaged in those sort of things. And so I love the fact to be able to do that. And it's not that I wasn't spending more time with them before prior to going into this detox, 30 days detox from social media. It's just that now I'm able to prioritize better all those different things. And... I literally spend now maybe an hour across all these different social media. It just, I don't have that crave anymore after these 30 days because I've been able to incorporate all the things outside of what I used to do in social media. And obviously, like I stated at the beginning of when we started talking about this, I don't rely on social media for any sort of business. I, I don't have necessarily an actual business. And I hate using these words uh, that I retired about, you know, five, six years ago. I'm not retired. I still do a bunch of different things. Uh, a lot of investment, especially in the, you know, blockchain, cryptocurrency um, space. But um, I spend more time now prioritizing my kids whenever they need anything. And so uh, Wednesdays and Thursday, no, Tuesdays and Thursday are field trip days for my kids. And so, mm. you know, the family will go somewhere around Taiwan that they can learn something about, you know, this beautiful island of Taiwan. And so they're half Taiwanese, half American or, or half Dominican, which is my upbringing. And, you know, it's great to be able to to give them that ability. I think it's so important for us as parents to be more accessible to our family. 
Yeah, it definitely is important. In fact, uh, I was pulling this up while you were talking because uh, I did this uh, podcast for my Off the Record series, which is something that I do exclusively on my website, but I can talk about it here. Uh, back on March 19, 2020, called Social Media Distancing, Save Good. Your Sanity. Uh, and then in addition, yeah, exactly. to that, <laughs> in addition to that, the Hodge Twins shared socialism distancing. Cool. Um, the reason I, I put that stuff up is because I make the case like, oh, with the whole with the pandemic, uh, all of a sudden, um, Facebook is cool again. And as soon as people got on Facebook, they remind they were reminded why they hated it in the, and left in the first place. Yeah, because yeah, uh, exactly. Last year, truly, Facebook turned into Twitter. And the reason that's a big deal yeah. is Twitter is just a cesspool of just leftist ideology living in an alternate reality. And I don't even call it reality. It's just it's just a fever dream of theirs that will never come to pass. Which and is why the metaverse turns, because that's precisely where they're going. And by the way, if you keep hearing that turn metaverse and things like that, and you want to know more about it, just watch the movie Ready Player One. <laughs> and, and sometimes friends ask me, you know, what is this metaverse? And I just tell them to watch that movie because I think it 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 is the foundation for what's to come, where you know our childrens will be living in in an environment similar to that. So just watch the movie. Pretty much, um, and I think even Minority Report to some extent did it that way. Cyber parlors okay. where you're living in a, a a different life, or even Total Recall uh, back yep. in 1991. Yeah, so yep. it's a lot of this stuff where you're living a life that isn't real because you're living it. You're experiencing it through an avatar. Well, um, do you remember the movie Gamers? Is that the one with uh, Gerard Butler? Yes, I didn't see the movie, but I know of it. It's like an action okay. uh, romp. Exactly, but it's it's identical. is 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 similar to what has been perceived as Web 3.0, which is metaverse. Mm. So obviously, I don't recommend that for children's under 13. Uh, it it's you know more of a adult type of film. Yeah, that one definitely is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not Ready Player yeah. One. Ready Player One no, is no. great. I actually bought the book for my children and know that and they have read it so yeah yeah um and it, and what you were saying uh, it's just sharing your experience with the whole um uh, uh like detoxing from tech you know i mean uh social media and all that i deleted my facebook um this year mm -hmm. i left on my own terms um and yeah. i warned my family like hey i'm leaving uh, and then uh, those people that were jumping off whatsapp I'm like uh yeah i was way ahead of you years ago because <laughs> as soon as facebook bought them I'm like heck no i'm out of here yeah, the exactly. Only one that I, the only one that I kept was Instagram. I had Instagram before Facebook bought them out. Mm -hmm. And Instagram, I opened it as a business front. So I'm like, well, I'm still using it as business, but eventually I did try to make it more personable. So I had to go in there and manually take down stuff that were that, that were family. It's not enough to just archive them because they're still there. So I had to go in there and delete them. Um, but it's not to say they're not on some Facebook server somewhere. But yeah, ultimately, exactly. like, I don't I don't need them out to be in the public. Uh, and I like I tell people, I'm on some of these tech big tech platforms until I'm no longer welcome there. In other words, they boot me right. out. So whatever. But I made right. myself like uh, uncancelable this year by being across multiple different platforms. I'm like on seven video platforms total. I'm across wow. like six social media um, uh, platforms, uh, not counting oh, counting Instagram. Um, that's the big one. And I'm not on Facebook. I'm not coming back to Facebook. I do have um, a, a, a private Twitter. I don't follow. Uh, I don't have any followers, but I follow mm -hmm. um, local city accounts because the only way I can get uh, those updates from the city. But even that, I'm kind of leaning off it. It's like just trying to find another way to get that information. Um, but one of the things has been to I, I sometimes spread my time out through some of these uh, social media platforms because uh, that's the only way to not use Twitter. But it doesn't mean these places make it any better either. Right. Because uh, exactly. there's some places where there's there's the other unsavory folk. Uh, and it just becomes a place that you don't want that kind of uh, engagement. But it's, it's this kind of tying all of these conversations that we had in since the beginning. How we yeah. talked about Apple and the convenience and everything that came across from it. There is one thing, though, that Apple did. Mm -hmm. And that is condition its users yep. to be stuck on it and not be able to leave their walled garden. Because mm -hmm. 
uh, like you talk about screen time. Well, let's talk about iOS itself. iOS, you cannot personalize it unless you jailbreak it. And if you want to, you want to change the iconography, you want to change the layout. And all this, you can't do that. So, well, why can't I change it to what I want? It's for your own good. That's Apple telling you what to do with the phone yep. that you bought. But it's like, no, it's what we want you to want. And every time you update to the latest operating system, we throttle the phone so it gets a little slower so we can extend the battery life of it. It's like, but I don't want to extend the battery life. I want to get the performance out of it. No, it's for your own good. It's a conditioning that they've been doing. It's like, oh, okay, you know better than I do. I even though I'm the one using the phone. Uh, and they I know you're monitoring everything now. Yeah, they pay so very hefty for that, so. And that's and that's just it that they that they condition same thing with social media where it was like mm -hmm. well I had MySpace I had Friendster or whatever and then ultimately Facebook uh, Facebook is another MySpace and it started becoming more and more involved in our lives and with TikTok groups, calendars well, events yeah TikTok I don't even touch the I don't Horrible. touch them the ten foot pole but yeah <laughs> the to to the extension thereof is that we started living uh, with this thing about social validation everybody mm -hmm. heralded as the iphone as like oh that's like the thing to get and you had a, and you had an android it's like well i have an android i don't have an iphone it's a lot of symbols it. as well that's how a lot of people sees it too and that's that. why that's why they ended up living their lives like oh how many likes am i going to get uh, how many right. shares am i going to get how many yep. followers do i have and it's like and i was and uh, yeah i was caught up with that it, uh, just like anybody else was but then i snapped out of it. it's like uh, uh no wait a minute um i don't need validation because i know who i am and what i want to do so right. th that's that's one of the big things about uh technology uh and big tech as a whole this whole thing is psychological conditioning right. to make us dependent on these things mm -hmm. uh, and breaking away is sometimes often very difficult yeah, I had to go to rural parts of Wyoming because only Verizon works. But I had to find a place in um, where only two thousand people live in the town to finally find a place where there was no cell phone service. Yeah, and that's like my go-to escapism. I had to like, get out of here and go see God's creation, and that's the only way to yep. truly disconnect and detox because there's so much more out there. Uh, and uh, like I have a book published that's only available in print. I don't want anybody buying the Kindle version. It's like no. Cool. Pick up a book, people. Uh, and I shared a, I have to pull it up here. This one's from Instagram, speaking of big tech. <laughs> but yeah. the, it's, it's it's actually a really good one because uh, some people ask me, is that the thing from, uh, uh, is that the library from the uh, Beauty and the Beast thing? No, not this one, but it's in, in I think it's Portugal. No, Brazil. I don't know. You can see there's a lot of, like, yeah, I can right, see there it. we go. That's a library, just a section of it. Like, holy, it's like a royal library in Brazil. Mm. It's like, dude, that's what I, I wish to have. I want to, uh, all my books are in the garage right now because I don't have space to put them in. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to just being able to put them all away. But yeah, so it's, it's 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 great that you shared your experience about being able to detox and people should take some some notes of that so they lose their habit. And as as we wind it down here, because uh, um, we, we would both, uh, I'm sure, have to go. But I, I, I have to ask you th that question because you you moved away from you wanted to detox with social media because of just how toxic it was, but it's becoming toxic because of the stupid debates that are happening over here. Yeah. How does the United States look to an American that's living across the ocean? Is like, do you see the entire country up in flames, falling, uh, sinking to the ocean, or or how do you see it? Here's the thing: um, I'm not a big fan of California politics okay uh, i i enjoy california i grew up in new york and other states that i'm not fond of and <clears throat> um i wanted to give my kids a different experience than than what i grew up i mean every parent that's what they want they want to make their children's lives better or at least i hope that's the case and so the ability that we have that we were blessed Back then, even though I was let go from my job in 2013, when my boy was born, actually, he was like two months old when, when I was let go from my job. And, and here's the irony of that, just so that I can touch briefly on that. Um, the reason why I was let go was because my counterpart that I have from Apple, the engineer that I used to work very close with, he was a Christian and we wanted to spend more time together and he wanted me to come to work directly for Apple. Mm -hmm. And an opportunity came up 
I went through the interview, but it wasn't what I really, really wanted. I was so comfortable in the company I was. I was making, you know, great money, six figures income, and I was very comfortable. And one of the person that was in that meeting, one of the seven people that I was interviewing that day was a very close friend that played golfs with the owner of the company I was working uh, for at the time. And so that information obviously went on to the ears of, of the owner of the company, which we were very, very close. And that was it. You know, they, according to them, they felt betrayed. Um, mm. In reality, I, I, you know, I was very honest at that time. I told them, look, I will do whatever it takes to improve my life and the well-being of my family, even if it means, Someone you know, <laughs> even if it means switching company and going to work, you know, somewhere else. But anyways, going back to what you were saying. And so we were blessed with that ability. Uh, we became financially independent uh, two years after that. Nice. And when we realized that we didn't need to work for anyone, uh, that we were, we were, we had that opportunity. Then we just started traveling, and we would go for six months to various different company uh, countries, and uh, it was great. You know, we were putting our kids in co-ops classes uh, throughout all these different countries, and they were learning different cultures. They were learning different experience, and it was just great. Um, and then we decided to land in Taiwan. My wife's uh, family still lives here. And I loved Taiwan. I don't know how else to say it. I just, you know, it is an incredible country. It is a beautiful island. If there's anything negative that I can think about, it's just the driving, okay? <laughs> Do not drive here. That is it. Uh, Especially on a that, scooter. Yes, um, other than that, it is an amazing country. And so living with the fear, especially in the past two years or so, living with the fear that a dictatorship such as China is breathing on Taiwan's neck even more in the past two years has put a lot of people in a very difficult state of mind, especially... Yeah. Uh, foreigners, especially expats that lived here in Taiwan. I have a few good friends, even in the community where I live, that they're foreigners, some from the States, others from Europe. And we're constantly talking about this. Now, what's fascinating is that um, a few weeks back, I don't know if you have ever heard of Disclosed.tv. Yeah. Um, okay. I follow I follow them on Telegram, and there was a poll that was taken, and here is here's the question. Where will we see war first? Number one, Ukraine. Number two, Iran. Number three, Taiwan. Number four, North Korea. And number five, civil war, mm. meaning civil war in the United States. That's it. 31% mm. say Ukraine. 7% said Iran, 20% said Taiwan, 1% said North Korea, and 41% says civil war yep. in the United States. So that pretty much tells you everything there is to know when it comes to, you know, what's happening. Uh, the perception from us as expat living in Taiwan. I don't speak Chinese. So I know the the local, um, you know, the people from here, my wife listened to the news all the time. And it's just constantly over the news. You know, China just violated the airspace of Taiwan. It's almost happening on a daily basis. And the constant pressure continue and continue. And the only thing that I think is preventing them from just, I mean, understand, China is within about an hour or so away from Taiwan. It's like it's this far distant, you know, country. It's it's right there. Yeah. Um, and I would say that the only reason that 
Taiwan has been taken just yet, not the only reason, but one of the primary reasons is because of the obviously influence that, that the United States have here, just like Taiwan has a lot of influence here, excuse me, Japan and Korea, that, that is South Korea and Australia as well. It's a ally of Taiwan. And I will say one of the primary uh, reasons for that is because of TSMC. And for those of you that are not familiar, TSMC is one of the largest uh, chip manufacturer in the world. And so had there not be a TSMC here in Taiwan, I can tell you with certainty that Taiwan would have been taken over you know, years ago. Hmm. So a lot of people live in constant fear, so much so that my British friend, um, James, he just told me, he sent me a message the other day when we were just talking about uh, about our family and how things were, you know, word and all that. Um, and he was just telling me that I have a friend that's been strongly encouraging me to have time to leave Taiwan as soon as possible as he feels Chinese attack is imminent. Mm -hmm. uh, he says that I need to prepare a go bug out bags for my whole family if I stay. And so he was asking me, how am I handling those things? And obviously from a you know Christian perspective, you know, it is in God's hands ultimately, but us as human beings, we can obviously prepare for that as well. And you know, if it comes down to that, there's plausible scenarios that we could just, you know, they'll give us, I don't know, a, a 30 days for anybody that wants to leave the island to leave or, or what have you. Um, but there's no way I, will, I would definitely stay in Taiwan if China does what they pull off on um, Hong yeah, Kong. Okay. Uh, a while back. There's just no way. The freedom that you have here in Taiwan, I, I don't know how to explain it for people in the States. It's just remarkable. The fact that here in Taiwan, just with this ridiculous COVID pandemic that, that we're still living through, um, granted there were some lockdowns but it wasn't as extreme as we have seen in in the united states specifically in throughout western nations and the one thing that i noticed was that taiwan's focused a lot on feeding their population with information about whatever it, it might be when it comes to a virus and there were just oh my goodness i remember getting those emergency texts on my phone um, and things like that about, you know, social distancing. And this is, you know, where we are right now. They're not perfect. They have made a, a few mistakes along the way, just like everybody else. Yeah. But Taiwan was one of the very first nations that noticed what was happening in China before a lot of other countries and because of the politics of the WHO and the influence that China has in that institution, Taiwan was not allowed to warn a lot of other countries. As of today, Taiwan is not allowed to speak in, in the World Health uh, Organization community. And so they have to speak through proxies and get information secondhand, perhaps from the U.S. or some other nation, for the mere reason that China does not want Taiwan to be recognized as an independent nation. And that's just sad. 25 plus million human beings living cohesively with all types of religion freedoms and, and the ability to go about your business, live your life, um, something that is not a, that I'm a big fan of, but I respect other people. Taiwan is one of the nations that, you know, legalized same-sex marriage a while back. And at first I was a bit kind of like, mm, I don't know if I want my kids to be involved in, in some sort of teaching about any of those things because I'm the parent, I'm, I'm the one responsible to speak to them about those things. 
But in the end, you know, that did not affect uh, schools or any of those things. People here are more respectful of that. They don't put them in your face. They don't try to inject politics on everything like we do in America. And, you know, again, just the fact that even during pandemic, you can literally just walk and go anywhere you want. During the pandemic, my kids were going to the beach because we live about 10 minutes uh, from the beach. They were going to the beach almost every other day. Hmm. And just the fact that you, you're able to do that, as opposed to what most of these nations have done, specifically the United States, is just insane. And the biggest mistake that we did at the beginning of, of the pandemic in 2020 was when my wife was panicking because she didn't think Taiwan was prepared for the pandemic and all those sorts of things. So uh -huh. we packed up, left Taiwan, went back to California, uh -huh. uh, thinking that, well, you know, the United States is better prepared. And I disagree. But as we, as we all know, as husbands, you know, at some point we need to kind of, you know, give in and, and you know, kind of reassess your life situation. I went with it and we rented a place in Orange County. And it was, even though it was, Orange County wasn't 100% locked down. When we would go visit our families and friends, for instance, in the Arcadia, Monrovia area, mm -hmm. it was just crazy. It was just absolutely insane. And then when we started doing all the lines outside, for instance, we love Trader Joe's. Um, you know, you have to go into these crazy lines and all that, reminiscence of the Great Depression and all this thing. It was yeah. just absolutely bananas. And sure enough, we just lasted for almost like three or four months because I couldn't take it. I, I just, I said, mm. you know what? There's no way I'm staying uh, um, here in, in the States knowing that Number one, Taiwan is, I, I think it is much more better prepared for pandemics like this. And I just love the freedom. And that's exactly what we did. We packed up everything and we, in the middle of the pandemic, we just grabbed our kid and our stuff and just came back here. Yeah, because Taiwan's like, again? <laughs> because this is like, yeah, what, exactly. it went from SARS to swine flu to this one. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, here we go again. It's like, it's all like in in a span of uh, two decades, three of these things. Uh, so yeah, they knew what they were they were doing. That's why they were like the last ones to experience like, oh, you guys are finally going through what we did last year. <laughs> it's like, exactly. Taiwan, Taiwan's finally hitting it, but uh, they hit the number on the head, but still the hysteria was always going to be something because of, uh, it's, it's a human condition. Uh, and right. That's that's ultimately what drives it. And over here in the United States, we, we let stupid uh, rule. So Sad. giving giving yielding over to that uh, ideology of stupid, that's why we're we're in this never ending cycle of hey, you go, go get the jab. Why? Very well, do you have your jab? Yeah. No, but my jab won't work unless you take your jab. It's like, but exactly. we still got to mask up. Exactly. So if the masks work, why do we need the jab? And you're still like, spreading no. the virus too. Yeah, no, no, so we need it. But and today Pfizer says, oh, three of our jabs work against Omicron. Oh my goodness. So we don't end it. And and Fauci, the the science uh oh here in the United States, he said, Yeah, we're gonna redefine uh, the meaning of fully vaccinated. Uh again. <laughs> it's like and, and that's why I put on Instagram. It's like, yeah, and can we while you're at it, can we return back to the actual definition of vaccine? Because exactly. you guys keep changing it for political uh reasons. It's like it's we have entered that realm of stupid, and a lot more people yeah. have waken up to that. And some are turning away from from social media. Finally, they're getting red pilled. Some of them are are realizing like, hey, you know what? Maybe the 2020 election wasn't the freest, most uh uh a, a safest election ever yeah. maybe some shenanigans did go down uh and yeah. some of us some of us that we're being told like wait we're being told that yes it is and but when it was no like uh kyle rittenhouse didn't shoot three three black people at um I mean, at, at, at a at a blm riot in kenosha yeah. wisconsin no they were all white and they were criminals and of the worst kind uh, so you can't make this stuff up as people are yeah. finally waking up and realizing you know what? 
why isn't the media talking about the Epstein trial? The, yep, the exactly. Lazzy Maxwell. What about the pictures that are released today? Or the uh, juicy, you know, juicy Smollett case. That's how I oh, call yeah. it. Juicy. Yeah. And BLM just put out a statement just a few hours ago with respects to that. They're saying that, no, the, the, we don't believe the police. Uh, ju uh, juicy Smollett was actually, uh, um, he's the victim here. And uh, we stand 100% behind him. I'm paraphrasing, but it's pretty much what they said. Like, yeah. dude. Do you not realize that uh, social media is not real life? That is not the way it works. And they're trying to push a narrative that's pushing us closer and closer to civil war, separating us by race and putting in this race war because they're, they're telling us that white supremacy is the number one thing. It's like, no, you're begetting more racism by right. saying there's racism. And because you it can't find it, it you yeah. make it up. Yeah. Like Juicy Smollett did, or Juicy yeah. Smollier, as Dave Chappelle said it, right? <laughs> it's like justice for Juicy. Uh, but yeah, it's been crazy. Dude, Sam, thanks so much. This uh, thank you. Uh, this might this might be a two-parter, man, because uh, we, we went long in this other segment too. But uh I, I do gotta wrap here. <laughs> no, man, it's good stuff, and we haven't connected in a while like this, too. Uh right. so uh, and I totally agree um, with you because I have I have uh, my other side of the family through my wife. Uh, almost all of them are in Taiwan, and uh, okay. I said it. I said it to my brother-in-law many, many times. It's like, dude, bro, when you buy your house, make sure you have enough room for your parents. It's like, That's why? Right. Because you're not paying attention to what's happening on their backyard. Yep. It could happen at any time. Anytime. The two most dangerous straits in the world, and one of them is Taiwan. It's mm -hmm. it's insane how 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 it is over there uh, with uh, with China breathing down their neck and yep. on a whim they need to have a place to land. That's what sure. you want a plan B. So that's and that's where we'll leave it, Sam. Hopefully All the right. next time we talk, we're not locked down to the CCP. So, <laughs> so <laughs> <that's> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, good having you on the program, man. And uh, we'll Thank be talking on your socials. All right, bro. Take it easy. Bye.